All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about anamorphic and wide angle lenses for your DJI Mini 3 Pro. What are they? How do you use them? And can these actually give you a cinematic feel to your footage? Well, here's some footage I was able to capture and we'll get right into it. So recently, Freewell sent out this anamorphic and wide angle lens pack out to me so I can try out and give my honest opinion about it. Now these are a little bit different than the other wide angle and anamorphic lenses out there because this comes with ND filters that you can actually attach to the lenses. So I can say this is a great idea because this does allow you to get your cinematic motion blur that you want in your cinematic videos. So this is a nice touch. And I'll go over how these work a little bit later on in the video. But as far as my experience using these, uh, it is enjoyable. And I do have one favorite over the other, as you probably could tell by the intro of this video. And I can tell you right now, uh, you know, I like the results. So after this video, if you are interested in picking up a pack of these, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check them out. Now, the first lens I wanna talk about is the wide angle lens. Now the standard camera field of view on the DJI Mini 3 Pro is 82.1 degrees. And with the wide angle lens, it increases your field of view to 111 degrees. This is great for landscape photography and videography. And the wide angle lens gives you the ability to get more of your scene without being too far away from your subject. And like I mentioned, the wide angle lens is great for capturing more of your scenery. However, there is a trade-off. With these, you do notice a slight barrel distortion when filming next to linear objects or when filming, you know, landscape or the horizon. Uh, but it all depends on the type of look that you want. Me personally, I would just use it for photography and not videography and maybe use a, you know, third party software to correct the barrel distortion. So before we move on, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up because it does help YouTube push it out to more people who are searching for content such as this. Now, the other lens that comes in this pack is the anamorphic lens. And this is my favorite one out of the two. So if you're not familiar with anamorphic lenses, it's kind of like a circus funhouse mirror that compresses the image uh, horizontally. And because of that, um, we will have to stretch it back out or de-squeeze it in post. By doing this, it does allow you to capture a wider field of view. It is not as wide as the wide angle lens that's in this pack. However, you do capture more of your scenery than you normally would just by using the anamorphic lens. Now, the de-squeeze factor for this particular anamorphic lens is 1.19, and I'll go over shortly what you need to do with that number in post uh, when using Final Cut Pro. Now, another selling point for a more cinematic look are the lens flares. These flares appear as horizontal streaks when a light source hits the lens directly. Now, this is an effect that you've probably seen in the movies plenty of times, and this can actually make your footage look more filmic. And the Freewell anamorphic lens creates a streak that's a little bit more subtle and actually complements your footage without destroying it or making it you know, more confusing. Now, the anamorphic lens is great and I love filming with it. Uh, and I will be using it a lot more when I'm filming you know, cinematic sequences or cinematic intros. But just like the wide angle, there are a couple trade-offs when using this lens. Now, first thing, you may notice a focus fall off. Now, what this is, is that the image loses focus the further out you get from the center. Now, this is typical for these type of lenses and is not anything too noticeable, but you do notice a little bit on the outer edges of the image. And as far as distortion, there's minimal distortion, not as much as the wide angle lens. 
However, if you are looking very closely, you will notice a little bit of distortion. Uh, but like I said before, this is typical of these type of lenses. To install these onto the DJI Mini 3 Pro, it's just like any other filter. Just take off the lens cap that's already on there, and then take the wide angle or anamorphic lens and place it on there and twist it on and it snaps right into place. This pack also comes with five filters, ranging from ND16, 32, 64, 128, and 256, which should cover you for all types of lighting situations. And all you need to do to use these is to choose either your wide angle or anamorphic lens, then choose the right filter, and then just place the filter on the front of the lens, and then it snaps right into place. So a recommendation from Freewell is to install the wide angle or anamorphic lens onto the camera, then power on your DJI Mini 3 Pro, and allow it to go through the calibration phase of the gimbal. Then once that's complete, uh, if you are using an ND filter, then you can place the ND filter onto the lens. This is because at one point it was hitting the top of the drone and causing the gimbal to overload. Now the only problem I have with that method is that the ND filter does not go onto the lens that easily. When trying to place the ND filter onto either the wide angle or anamorphic lens while the drone is on, uh, it does cause a gimbal overload anyway. However, after the latest firmware update, the DJI Mini 3 Pro does recognize when a wide angle lens is on the camera. And I haven't experienced the uh, gimbal hitting the top of the drone uh, ever since the latest firmware update. So I suggest if you are using a filter, place it on the anamorphic or wide angle lens first, then place both of them onto the camera and then turn on your DJI Mini 3 Pro. So if you guys can do me a favor and try this for yourself and uh, let me know in the comments below if it uh, works for you as well. So you remember that D-squeeze factor that I gave you a little bit earlier? Now's the time that I'm gonna show you what to do with that number and how to edit your anamorphic footage in post. Now my editor of choice is Final Cut Pro. Now the first thing you need to do is just drag in your footage that you recorded with the anamorphic lens. Then head over to the inspector under the transform section. Then take that horizontal de-squeeze factor and place it in the X scale. Now with basic math, you can convert that to percentage, which is 119%. And then you can see that it changes the overall scale. So to fit this back into a, a 16 by nine ratio uh, aspect ratio, just drag this back down to 100%. And as you can see, it creates these so-called black bars on the top and bottom and just squeezes the image to make it look normal. So from now on, when you're editing your anamorphic footage in Final Cut Pro, all you need to do is type in 84.03 in the Y scale and you'll be good to go. So when it comes to using these lenses, your decision should be based on the overall look that you want and the story you want to convey to your audience. And like I mentioned earlier, I do have my favorite and I will be using it a lot more when uh, filming my cinematic videos or cinematic intros. And also remember, if you are thinking about picking up a pack of these, I will leave a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check them out. Uh, but until next time, you guys be safe and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>